Just pour in hot water and you have your own personal heater. That's a hot water bottle. Pocket warmers, meanwhile, are small heat sources that you carry with you. Both of these items are just the thing for Japan's cold winters. Hot water bottles and pocket warmers have a long history in Japan. 500 years of warmth and comfort. From items owned by shoguns to models made necessary by wartime shortages, the materials and design of hot water bottles have clearly reflected each period in Japanese history. One man is so fascinated by hot water bottles that he not only collects antique specimens, he designed his own ideal hot water bottle. The Japanese today are taking a fresh look at these traditional heating devices for their energy saving advantages. New examples include hot water bottles filled with hot spring water and rechargeable solar powered pocket warmers. On this edition of Begin Japanology, our theme is hot water bottles and pocket warmers. We'll see what these traditional heating devices reveal about Japanese ingenuity. Hello and welcome to Begin Japanology. I'm Peter Barakan. Japan in midwinter can be seriously cold. Even in Tokyo, where you'll get cloudless blue skies a lot of the time, the cold just bites into your bones. And people have been dealing with that cold recently by using things like hot water bottles and pocket warmers, items which may not be too familiar to people outside Japan. Let me just show you an example I have here in my pocket. This is a little mini hot water bottle, and very warm and comforting it is too. Oh, I shall put it back in my pocket now. And see what I have on my hands here. These are not regular gloves. They have disposable pocket warmers inside them. And if you're going to be working in the winter months outside, you're going to really feel the benefit of these. They warm the backs of your hands and stop them from getting numb. There seems to be something ingrained in the Japanese DNA that makes people want to develop new products. Let's take a look at what's available on the market. These are traditional Japanese houses. The top priority is to beat the heat in the hot and humid summer, so the design maximizes ventilation. But that great ventilation is a problem in the winter, when it becomes difficult to heat an entire room. That's why devices that warm you up have been developed. This is called a kotatsu. A wooden framework is covered with a blanket. It's a great way to keep your feet and legs warm. Inside it, there is a source of heat generated by charcoal or electricity. This is a hibachi. Charcoal smouldering in a ceramic or wooden vessel helps to keep your hands warm. But the convenience and comfort of hot water bottles and pocket warmers make them everyone's favourite heating devices. Hot water bottles first came to Japan from China in the 16th century. The first pocket warmers are thought to have been devised in Japan as far back as the 12th century. Over the ages, these devices have evolved into many forms for many uses. This is a metal hot water bottle. These are typically made of corrugated sheet metal. Because the metal transmits heat well, they're hot as soon as hot water is poured into them and retain the heat well. After the hot water is poured in, the bottle is wrapped in a towel or special cover so that the heat is bearable. Typically, a hot water bottle is placed at the foot of a bed. There's no risk of gas fumes or fire, so they're very safe. This is a factory where metal hot water bottles are made. Sheets of metal just 0.5 millimeters thick are stamped into a corrugated shape. That shape actually releases more heat, while the bottle itself is thin but strong. A metal hot water bottle can be heated on an open flame, so you can use it again and again without replacing the water.
some models can be warmed up using modern electric hot plates. Hot water bottles can be used for purposes other than heating. Here people are making fermented soybeans called natto, a traditional Japanese food. The microorganisms produce the best fermentation results at a temperature of around 40 degrees Celsius. This temperature must be maintained for more than 12 hours and that's where the hot water bottles come in. These days a plastic hot water bottle is the most commonly used type. As plastic won't rust, it's long-lasting as well as light and thus easy to carry. Recently, to conserve electricity, more and more people have been using hot water bottles around the home and even at the office. These advanced devices are made of the same material as wetsuits. They're mainly used to relieve symptoms of poor blood circulation and stiff shoulders. Because the material is soft, these devices fit the body snugly. This one looks like a scarf. It's meant to warm the shoulders and neck and improve circulation. To warm up cold feet, there are these hot water boots. This bottom warming cushion, made of a special kind of plastic, is a health aid. It cradles the pelvis from every direction. Many blood vessels pass through the pelvis and this device is said to improve circulation as it warms you up. These are pocket warmers, a handy portable heat source. They slowly burn a fuel such as benzene inside a small metal case that can be kept in a pocket. The most popular pocket warmers today are disposable ones like these. Iron powder, wrapped in a non-woven fabric or paper covering, releases heat through chemical oxidation. There are also stick-on versions, which make sure the heat stays just where you want it. Different shapes and sizes are available for hips, toes and shoulders. Personal warming devices are must-have items in the Japanese winter. Here's a new kind of pocket warmer. This uses sodium acetate solution. When a coin-shaped metal button inside is pressed, the solution crystallizes, producing about an hour of 45 degree heat. To reset it, all you have to do is put it in boiling water. You can use it again and again. And here is another reusable, environmentally friendly electric hand warmer. It has a built-in solar panel. It even has an LED light, so it can serve as a torch in an emergency. In Japan, the latest technology is devoted to the cause of making better hot water bottles and pocket warmers. This is the hot water bottle department of a large store in Tokyo and they come in all kinds of colors, sizes and shapes. And in addition to the regular ones, we have this here which is quite heavy. This is filled with a kind of gel. You put it in a microwave, heat it up for five or six minutes and it stays hot for 10 hours. And then over here we have this object. This actually has a hot water bottle inside it. As to what kind of animal it is, your guess is as good as mine, but if you think these things are a, a modern invention, you'll be quite wrong. They go back a long, long way. Let's take a look. This so-called warming stone was found at a 13th century archaeological site. Stones retain heat well, and in those days they would be heated in a brazier, then wrapped in cloth. This is regarded as the starting point of the pocket warmer. 
The kind of pocket warmer used in Japan now can be traced back to the 18th century. Ash, saltpeter, and other substances were placed in a metal container and lit. In those early years, pocket warmers were real luxury items. Then in the 1920s came a revolutionary Japanese invention. A pocket warmer powered by benzene with the help of a platinum catalyst. Compared to previous pocket warmers, this provided a safer and longer lasting source of heat. The containers were miniaturized to make them easier to carry around. These devices played a vital role in keeping soldiers warm in the winter during Japan's military campaigns in Asia. The history of hot water bottles, on the other hand, goes back to the 16th century. Early hot water bottles were made of copper, which transfers heat well. At the time, though, copper was very expensive, so hot water bottles were too pricey for most people. This hot water bottle was passed down through generations of Tokugawa shoguns. It's made of copper and shaped like a dog. One of the ears serves as the lid of the opening through which hot water is poured in. In the 19th century, ceramic hot water bottles appeared. As ceramic was much cheaper than copper, ordinary people could now afford to buy a hot water bottle. The custom of sleeping on a futon was also spreading at around that time, and this is said to have helped to boost demand for hot water bottles. By the 1910s, metal hot water bottles were available. As these were cheap and also easy to make, Metal soon became the first choice for a hot water bottle. Later, advances in metal stamping technology made possible thinner, stronger metal. This led to a real breakthrough, the corrugated metal hot water bottle, which is still made and used in Japan today. In the first decades of the 20th century, there were even rental hot water bottle shops that rented out hot water bottles to people who had guests staying, for example. These rental shops were very popular. Hot water bottles also served Japan's armed forces well. Soldiers on the front line used hot water bottles to stay warm at night, then drank the water in them during the day. Soichiro Honda famously started out in a small workshop and built a world-class car company. He made his first motorbike in 1947, and that featured a hot water bottle as the fuel tank. Post-war Japan was short of almost everything, so this was a clever solution. The first golden age of the hot water bottle in Japan was the late 1950s, when more than a million were made every year. Later, when electric heating appliances began to spread, the demand for hot water bottles went into decline. Hot water bottles are back in fashion again and selling something like two million units a year, which is more than double what they sold even in their heyday of the 1950s. This is a factory that makes plastic hot water bottles. I'm going to be talking to the owner here, Mr. Tetsuya Uchiyama. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. I'm a little surprised to see you in business here in midwinter. I would imagine the manufacturing cycle for hot water bottles is probably a little earlier in the year. Yes, uh, mostly from uh, summer to autumn. As far as uh, hot water bottles are concerned, can you show us some of the various things you make? Right now, for instance, this model that you sit on, which has health benefits, and colourful ones shaped like a strawberry or a clover. How many of all these, these things do you make in a, in a day, on average? It depends on which model, but something like 1,000 to 1,200. And this is the machine where you make them? Yes. You melt plastic, form it into a cylindrical shape and hang it, and then press it and put air into it. After it's cooled, you do the final shaping.
lines of these. Oh, yes. Brilliant. All finished off very quickly and efficiently. How hot is that? It's pretty hot. <laughs> it is a hot water bottle after all, but impressive. Thank you very much. Hi. You're Hi. welcome. In addition to their simple functionality, there's something comfortingly anachronistic about hot water bottles. At least I suspect that's the case with the man we're about to meet, who has a lifelong fascination with them. A quiet residential district in Tokyo. Uh, Welcome to my home. Noriyuki Ito has been a fan of hot water bottles for 13 years. His studio is full of them. These are all hot water bottles. Ito's collection is beautiful. These hot water bottles look like works of art. At a glance, some could be mistaken for vases or purely ornamental objects. How many does he have here? About 70, but I have more that I keep in other places. What other places? First, Ito takes us to the university in Tokyo where he works as a professor. His academic field is not hot water bottles, but fashion. Under chairs and tables, he has hot water bottles everywhere. Seventy more of them. But we're still just getting warmed up. This is my hot water bottle museum. His second home is also packed with hot water bottles. 280 of them. His house, his workplace, his second home. Collectively, he has 420 hot water bottles. Ito believes he is the biggest collector of hot water bottles in Japan. I went to a conference in southwest Japan and came across these mysterious vessels. I uh, did some research to find out what they were and then realized they were hot water bottles. But even when I read up about hot water bottles, I couldn't find much detailed information about them. So I started collecting materials to solve the mystery. Along the way, my interest grew and grew. Ito is not simply a collector of hot water bottles, He's now an expert on them. Let's see some selected pieces from his collection in chronological order. First, a copper hot water bottle. Shaped like a pillow, it was probably used by a person of high rank. It closely resembles an item listed as hot water bottle in an 18th century encyclopedia. This hot water bottle from the late 19th century is in the shape of a steam locomotive, probably to commemorate the opening of a rail service. The funnel of the locomotive serves as the opening for pouring in the hot water. This model was popular at a time when Japan was actively embracing Western culture. This is a war effort ceramic hot water bottle. Towards the end of the Second World War, the Japanese military needed all the metal they could get to make armaments. Ceramic models, as a result, made a comeback. At 11 p.m., Ito is gazing lovingly at his collection. Which should I use? Perhaps a Tadara wear one tonight. He selects a very valuable late 19th century item made in the kilns of Tadaro in Saga Prefecture. After making his selection, Ito boils some water. And he pours the hot water right into the precious antique. Everything in Ito's proud collection remains in active use. He chooses a hot water bottle every chilly night of the year. Now he takes out a thermometer. The room temperature is 15 degrees. He records the room temperature in a notebook before going to bed each evening. It's an important routine. 
Ah, yes, that's just perfect. The next morning, when Ito wakes at 7 a.m., he immediately makes a fresh measurement with the thermometer at his bedside. It's still warm. 42 degrees. By measuring the temperature before I go to bed and the temperature when I get up, I'm investigating the effects of the different materials and shapes. Based on his studies, Ito has designed a completely original hot water bottle. It's this ceramic one. A cone is a very stable shape. It won't tip over. It's also a nice shape to rest your feet on. And it only needs half the hot water used in a standard hot water bottle. This is a revolutionary hot water bottle design. Ito plans to keep studying the history of hot water bottles while also developing new ones. I'm going to visit an antique shop now where they have some vintage hot water bottles. It's just down here. Let's take a look. You've got a pretty interesting little collection of hot water bottles here. Perhaps you can tell us something about these as well. Unique patterns, colours and shapes. These are works of ceramic art from around the country. This brown one is Kasama ware from the Kanto region. This is Mashiko ware with its characteristic glaze. It's interesting because a hot water bottle is a very utilitarian sort of object and to have this sort of artistic quality to it is really quite remarkable, really, if you think about it. This one has a unique pattern, not to mention its shape. It's interesting that these things which are going to be covered up when you use them have this kind of artistic quality. You wonder why. This one even has a little handle on it. So you carry it around the house. Uh, and this one kind of has a, I don't know, it's a very pleasing quality to the, the rounded line of that. You know, it'll look nice if you put some flowers in it. I've got some flowers here, so let's see how it's going to look. Instead of just collecting hot water bottles, if you use them in everyday life, in creative ways, you may develop a deeper appreciation of them. Oh, that's, that's great. Yeah. yeah. OK, let's move on now and take a look at some new and rather ingenious ways of using hot water bottles and pocket warmers. This is Nozawa Onsen, a hot spring resort in Nagano Prefecture. Since 2007, this inn has been saving on late-night heating costs by offering guests hot water bottles at no charge. They're filled not with hot tap water, but with mineral water from the hot springs at a temperature of 65 degrees, just right for a hot water bottle. This service helps the inn to economize at the same time as pleasing guests. In the battle against global warming, this is better than burning fuel oil to heat the water. Guests love this hot water bottle service. Humans aren't the only ones who enjoy a nice hot water bottle. This is the home of Mikako Koyama in Gifu Prefecture. At Koyama's house, a hot water bottle provides a safe and economical way to keep the family dog warm. The dog uses a ceramic hot water bottle, which is highly resistant to chewing and biting. My dog really feels the cold, so I prepare a hot water bottle. The dog sleeps on it, and he seems happy. He always stays right by my side when I'm filling it. Bicycle taxis have become popular in Japan over the past 10 years or so as environmentally friendly ways to get around.
winter is coming to the disaster hit Tohoku region for the first time since the big earthquake. Relief supplies have been pouring in from all over Japan to those living in temporary housing. Along with winter clothes and blankets, disposable pocket warmers are an important item. Messages of support are written on these packages. Easy to use, disposable pocket warmers are bringing warmth and hope to disaster victims. Everything we had was swept away, so we appreciate this. Hot water bottles and other warmers can warm not just the body, but the soul. This looks nothing like the kind of hot water bottles that I had when I was a kid back in the 1950s. They were made out of rubber. When I first came to Tokyo in the mid-1970s, I never saw one of these things. So when I first came across one, I had absolutely no idea what it was. I guess they kind of semi-disappeared for a while, although they're back with a vengeance now for various reasons. One is the global recession, then there's high oil prices, plus people are just more ecologically conscious too. These things keep the water inside so warm that when you get up the next morning, you can actually wash your face in it. With those hand warmers, there's a move now away from the disposable ones to the reusable type. It's kind of like using 21st century technology to go back to a kinder, gentler time. I'll see you again next time. Next time, Ikebana. The Japanese approach to flower arranging aims to capture the essence of the season in a one-of-a-kind creation that goes to the heart of Japanese culture.